Option G paper now. Less two a abiotic factors that affect the distribution of plant species. So if you rem recall my in, in my previous paper, I gave you a nice little mnemonic, which is plants, and they stand for the six different abiotic factors which you need to know. P standing for pH, L for light, A for aqua or water, um, N for nutrients, T for temperature, and S for salinity. So I'm going to state the top two, pH of the soil and light intensity. Next question is, state one example of secondary succession, and this is as opposed to primary succession. The secondary succession is where an area has been, and that in, in that area there's previously been life, but that has been uh, reduced uh, because of a particular event. And in this, is, this case, I'm going to talk about the recovery of a forest after a bush fire. Now, the next question, which is worth two marks, is to dis distinguish between fundamental and realized niches. You, re you will get one point for defining um, both fundamental and realized niches, but also explaining why they differ and how they differ. So let's define it first. The fundamental niche is the potential mode of existence, while the realized niche is the actual mode of existence. And typically the realized niche is a subset or somewhat smaller than the fundamental niche. That's my second point. And the third point is to explain why it is smaller. And the reason why is that you have uh, aspects such as um, competition as well as predation, and this can cause the realized niche to be smaller than the fundamental niche. The last question now. Discuss the difficulties of classing, classifying organisms into trophic levels. Um, and this is fairly common sense. However, the first point I'm going to talk about is the fact that some organisms occupy multiple trophic levels. So one might be a primary consumer, but it also may be a secondary, tertiary, or even quaternary consumer. And sometimes all of those at the same time. So this concept of trophic levels can be a bit artificial in this particular sense. The second point I'm going to talk about is the uh, is give an example of that. So, for example, all, um, omnivores may be both primary consum consumers because they eat um, producers, but also might be secondary consumers as well. The third point. Well, the fact that some organisms may occupy a different trophic level at different times of the, the year due to availability of different kinds of food, that is a particular pertinent point because um, in an environment it's not like the food source will be the same for organisms at all years in time. And this is evident even with humans as well. But the final point I'm going to talk about is that some organisms, not including humans this time, they consume different kinds of food depending on the stage of their life cycle. So in the case of frogs and tadpoles, tadpoles would definitely have a different diet compared to frogs. And this would be similar for caterpillars and moths, uh, or caterpillars and butterflies as well. So another um, limitation of the trophic level uh, way of classifying things.